Hi, this is Professor Jen Mei Chan at California State University, Long Beach. In this video lesson today, we'll talk about fractions. To understand fractions, we need to understand the meaning of parts and whole. For example, take a whole pie. If I cut the whole pie into four equal parts, then each part is a quarter of the whole, or one fourth of the whole. Now take that same whole pie. If I had cut into eight equal parts, then each part is of size one eighth of the original whole. Notice that one fourth and one eighth are, are different sizes. But if I take two one eighths, it will actually give me the same amount as one piece of one fourth. This is why two times one eighths, which is like taking two pieces of one eighths, which can also be written as two eighths, is exactly the same as one quarter or one fourth. In this case, Two eighths and one fourth are called equivalent fractions. And which representation you use depends on the context of the problem. In this simple example here, we talked about quite a few key concepts that generalize these ideas into a formal definition of fraction. If we represent a fraction by its numerator and denominator with n and d, then d represents how many parts constitutes the whole. It's the name of the part. On the other hand, the numerator, n, represents the number of equal-sized parts. I want to emphasize the importance of equal size. When you're calculating fractions, you have to make sure that the counting units are exactly the same. For example, if I want to visualize two-fifths, the denominator of five tells me that I need to take the whole and cut it into five equal-sized parts, namely five parts makes one. So if we use a rectangular representation to represent the whole, then I would divide this rectangle into five equal sized pieces, where each piece is a fifth. Then the numerator of being two tells me that I need to take two of those equal sized parts. The result of taking two pieces of equal sized parts, where each part is one fifth, is exactly what two fifths is. One place where people typically make mistakes on fraction calculation is to forget that fraction gives a notion of proportion. So it really matters what the whole is to begin with, and you have to read it in context. Let me give you an example for that. Imagine you spent three-eighths of your money on coffee and gave three-eighths of the remainder to your parents. Then how much money is left? If you answered two-eighths, then you're certainly not seeing the change in the whole. This is the wrong way of thinking about it. You see that 3 eighths is taken on coffee, and another 3 eighths is also taken from folks. So it seems like 6 eighths of the total are taken. It's the remainder from 8 pieces, which is 2 eighths. Well, if you think this way, then you're not seeing that, that there's a difference between a proportion of what? The first sentence says it's 3 eighths of your money, but the second sentence says that it's 3 eighths of the remainder so this of something is telling us what is a three-eighths proportion of. The first sentence tells me that I spent three-eighths of my entire money. The second sentence says it's three-eighths of what's left after you've spent the three-eighths of your money. And this is what I mean. It matters what the whole is. The whole on that first sentence is money, but the whole on the second sentence is what's left after you've spent money on coffee. Now we can answer this question by visualizing it. Certainly you can answer this question algebraically, but that is less fun. First, let's draw a rectangle to represent the entire pot of money. Since 3 eighths of that money goes to coffee, I need to divide my whole into eight equal pieces and then take three of those. Taking three of those pieces for coffee, you can either just label it or shading it in to help visualize. The remainder portion of the money are the five equal pieces left over without being shaded. So what we need to do next is to take three eighths of the remainder portion of the money. Now, if we keep doing the vertical divisions in the remainder portion, then the picture is going to get really, really crowded. So instead, we're going to do horizontal division. And something to keep in mind is that when you divide into accounting units, you want to be consistent. So whatever you do to the remainder portion of it, you do the same thing for the coffee portion of it. So that way it allows us to calculate or to count easily once they have the consistent counting unit. 
What this represents now is that your entire pot of money is equally divided into 8 by 8, which are 64 equal sized units. Each of those little squares are now 1 64ths of the whole. And remember, we did the horizontal slices. So now if I want to take 3 eighths of the remainder, I would then take 3 slices of those horizontal slices. The question is asking how much money is left. So whatever is now not shaded is the amount of money that's left. And you can see that what's left is consisted of 5 by 5 rectangle which consists of 25 little squares. And since we have 64 squares total, that means the amount of money left is 25 64 Now, how fun was that to answer a fraction question? You never have to do any algebra in the entire process. All you needed to do is to understand the meaning of fractions and draw some pretty picture. To check your understanding so far about the notion of fractions, answer the following question on your own. The set of eight stars represent four thirds. How many stars represent one? Now feel free to pause the video and do this calculation on your own. Come back to check your answer. Well, four thirds means that there are four parts total. And if there are eight stars in the whole, that means eight stars gives four parts or two stars give one part. And you can visualize this easily by grouping two stars at a time, and you'll see that there's a total of four groups. So A stars gives you four parts, two star gives you one part. And since one can be realized as taking three parts of each size one third, meaning that I can write one as three over three, it's telling me that to get one, I would need to take three parts. So six stars represent one. So the answer is six stars. Well, if you didn't get that on the first try, that's okay. Let's practice another one next. How would you draw a point on the number line for the location of one if you have the following picture? Again, take a moment to think about this and come back for answer. On this real number line, we only know the location of five halves. We need to identify the point for one. At first, you realize that one is actually two halves. It's two equal sized parts of one half each. Well, to get to five halves in the first place, one would have to count it off five parts to get there. So that tells me there should be five equal sized pieces in between zero and five halves. So I would divide this entire interval between zero and five halves into five equal pieces, where each piece is of size one halves. And remember that one is two halves. That tells me that the location of one is precisely on the point where it's two halves. So to summarize how to find one on this real number line, I will first divide the interval between zero and five halves into five equal pieces. Then one is located at the end of the second part. If you feel like you need another practice, do this next one. Well, this time the counting unit is one fifth. So we have to first realize that one is equal to five parts of one fifth. The location of two fifths tells me that I would have to count it off two parts to get to two fifths. So that means I have to divide out whatever's in between zero and two fifths into two equal pieces. This tells me the size of one piece, in this case, the size of one fifth. So one is located at the end of the fifth part where each part is one fifth. Hopefully now you have become more comfortable dealing with fraction. Let's summarize some key ideas from this video. Number one, we talked about in any fraction represented as n over d, n being the numerator and d being the denominator, d represents how many parts constitute the whole, and n represents the number of equal sized parts. The second idea we talked about was to read carefully in context to figure out a fraction of what is in question. For example, 3 eighths of the whole is different than 3 eighths of the remainder. And another idea we talked about was the, the, the concept of equivalent fraction, namely 1 fourth is the same as 2 eighths. And this is because we look at 1 fourth as cutting a whole into four equal sized pieces, and we see 2 eighths as cutting the whole into eight equal sized pieces, but then taking two of those parts which if you do that, it gives you exactly the same amount as taking one part in the size of one fourth. And the fraction of one fourth and two eighths are called equivalent fractions. And when do you use two eighths and when do you use one fourth really depends on the context. 